It is May 6, 2023, and you're watching The Code Report. Serverless is the biggest lie in the history of computers. Why you always lying? When you go serverless, you're still using a server, it's just not yours. You'll compute nothing and be happy. Amazon Prime Video just dropped a shocking article explaining how they save 90% on their Amazon Web Services bill by switching from serverless microservices to an old-fashioned monolith architecture. That's great news for Amazon because it'll save a ton of money, but bad news for Amazon because it just lost a great revenue source. The article is sending shockwaves through tech right now, because one of the main claims of the serverless vision is that you can scale infrastructure more efficiently, which in theory should cost less money. I really appreciate Amazon's transparency here, because they're one of the original pioneers of serverless with Lambda functions. And nowadays you have tons of platforms offering serverless services, like Vercel and Netlify, which are actually just using and reselling AWS services behind the scenes. There's almost an entire industry of startups that make AWS easier to use, including open source projects like the serverless framework and SS. Tea, but not everyone is drinking the Kool-Aid. Like DHH, the creator of Ruby on Rails and Basecamp, has been advocating for majestic monoliths for the last decade, and took his entire company off the cloud after they spent over $3 million in one year. Now they just run their own servers. A lot of successful startups like Dropbox end up leaving the cloud once they get big enough. However, I personally use serverless for my projects, and it's an absolute game changer for getting things done quickly. Although I have accidentally created a few infinitely scaling infinite loops that could have potentially cost me an infinite amount of money. But what's the difference between a microservice and monolith architecture. At Prime Video, they needed a tool to analyze audio content for issues like video freeze and corruption. To implement this tool, they use multiple serverless functions called step functions, which are basically the same thing as Lambda, to handle different responsibilities. You have an initial entry point, which kicks off another service to do a file conversion that converts an audio video stream into frames that can be used by the detector. You've got multiple detectors using machine learning to analyze the video. Then finally, you have another function to aggregate the results and store them in a bucket. But there's a little bit of overhead every time you pass data from one service to another. They need to serialize and deserialize data and communicate over a network. In this case, their service needed to run multiple times for every second of a video stream, and they quickly hit a bottleneck with their account limits just trying to orchestrate the service. In addition, by temporarily uploading files to S3, they were burning through money just accessing these files in the buckets. They realized that the distributed architecture was the root cause of these bottlenecks, causing them to make a bold decision to re-architect to a monolith. Instead of running decoupled distributed services, they took everything and made it run on a single container. All the components are the same, but now that they run on a single server, they can only scale vertically. That means to do more work, they'll need to make each server bigger. Unlike the microservice architecture, which could scale horizontally by creating more servers for each individual component based on its scaling needs. That seems like it would be a drawback, but it eliminated all kinds of unnecessary communication and network usage that reduced their costs by 90%. And for a product of this magnitude, that means millions of dollars saved. So I guess the takeaway is that if you're using microservices, you should probably cobble them together into a monolith right now. Well, not so fast. In this case, the optimization was pretty obvious. Famously, back in 2008, Netflix was based on a monolith architecture and had a massive failure that motivated them to break their architecture into hundreds of different microservices that can scale independently with fault tolerance. It might be more complex and expensive, but if Netflix goes down for a few hours, it'll cost them way more money and lost memberships. Then for small businesses like me, I can easily deploy my shitty JavaScript code without ever having to think about infrastructure. I rarely even bust out of the free tier, and when I do, it's money well spent because I have peace of mind knowing that I'm not going to deploy some bad code to my monolith that takes down my entire operation. Ultimately, when it comes to cloud architecture, there are no solutions, only trade-offs. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.